In our previous video, we took a look at how to create a table inside of an Oracle database to store some information. In this video, we're going to take a look at something called a constraint, which allows you to define at the table level ways of limiting the information that will be accepted inside of your table. So if you remember from our previous video, we created this table to store my music collection. And we had these different columns that are out there, last name, first name, album, and rating. And we gave them each a type, character fields and number fields. And the type of the column kind of acts as a constraint also. If I try to insert a character field, like, you know, a Q, into the rating field, it's obviously not going to let me do that because it's defined as a number field. So that's kind of our first level of constraints that go along with our database. We're going to take a look at the five basic constraints that goes along with Oracle. And we've already had an exposure to some of them. If we take a look at our database again, and again, I'm hopping into a SQL developer to allow me to uh, look at all of these things graphically. If we take a look at my music table, click on music here, you can see there's tabs along the top of the screen. I define two of these columns as not null fields, my artist last name and my album. I said cannot be null. Those, that's an example of a constraint inside the Oracle database. So if I take a look at constraints, you can see that there are two of them defined. Artist last name is not null and album's not null. And because I didn't actually name the constraint, uh, it kind of created a system name for me automatically. But those are, uh, that's an example of a constraint, and not null is pretty simple to understand, right? If I try to insert information into this database and I leave that column null or blank, Oracle's not going to let me do it. It's going to say, hey, you have to have a value in here. Let's take a look at some of the other constraints that are out there. I'm going to click the little pencil icon here to edit, and it's going to show me a wizard that allowed me to go out there and create other constraints. So you can see I have this cannot be null, so that's where one of them is defined. Artist name, last name is not null, first name can be null. So there's an example of a not null constraint. Next constraint we're going to take a look at is one called unique. So if I go here to the right, I can say unique constraints, and here's a wizard that allows me to create information for a unique constraint. If I go back to my definition here, are any of these columns ones that I would want to have a unique constraint on? Well, probably not last name, because I'll probably have multiple you know, Radiohead CDs or Pink Floyd CDs or whatever. First name, probably not a good candidate either, because I'll have artists with the same first name. Is there a chance that I'm going to have the same album name? You know, Greatest Hits, I'll probably have multiple Greatest Hits albums, so that's probably not a good candidate. And rating certainly isn't a good candidate, because I'll have multiple values there. So there's probably no columns in this particular table it's, that's going to be good for a unique constraint. But you can see I have a wizard here that allows me to create it and make it nice and easy. A check constraint is one where I can write a real simple rule that allows me to say I'm going to limit information that's going to be accepted into this particular table. So let's take a look at our table again. Is there any kind of check constraint that would limit information that I would want to put in last name, first name, album? Probably nothing for those three columns, but what about rating? Rating seems to be a good candidate, right? I probably want to limit the information that I put in rating to between 0 and 10. Uh, everybody has their own rating system. Some people think in terms of, you know, stars, five stars for a great album. Uh, some people have a 0 to 10 rating. Some people have 0 to 100. And, you know, you can have any type of rating system that you want. But to maintain consistency in my database, because we've just defined this as a number field, I probably don't want somebody putting in something like, you know, 600. That doesn't mean anything probably want to limit the information that goes into my rating field to between uh, 0 and 10. How do we do it? Well, let's take a look at check constraints, and I'm going to add one. And you can see Oracle automatically defines a name for me based on uh, the table name, so it creates one called music check one. I can change it if I, if I don't want that field, but for now, I'm just going to leave it the way it is. And what's the condition? Well, I'm going to say that my rating column has to be between 0 and 10. If my syntax is correct, when I click on OK, Oracle will go through and it will create the thing for me. It doesn't show up here in the constraint name. You have to refresh the screen. So these two little arrows here refresh. And then there's music check 1, and it says that the rating has to be between 0 and 10. Again, if I've screwed up any of the syntax, Oracle will kick back and say, hey, I don't know what you're trying to do here. Uh, check constraints are really good for simple checks, something like this. A lot of people use them for something like a gender field, where they say, you know, it has to be an M or an F, or U for un undefined or uh, undisclosed, or something like that. So a check constraint is really good for that. And what it does is, like I said, it limits the type of information that I can put into my table. If I try to put in an 11, it's not going to let me do it. 
What other types of constraints are there? We've already seen not null, again, pretty self-explanatory. Unique, pretty self-explanatory. I have to have a unique value. Check constraint, I can write a real basic rule that says what is going to be on there. The other two big ones, and we're not going to spend a lot of time on this right now, we're going to um, have other videos that are devoted to this, are primary key and foreign key. Primary key is actually a blend of two of the other constraints that are out there. Primary key is a blend of unique and not null. So if I define something that's going to be a primary key inside my database, it has to have a unique value and it can't be null. Unique constraints, if I set up a unique constraint on a particular column, you can have multiple null values. Um, but a primary key has both unique constraint and a not null. And it's a way of uniquely identifying a piece of information. So on this particular design, I don't really have anything that uniquely defines any of these pieces. So I don't really have a good candidate for a primary key. Uh, a primary key also doesn't have to span just one column. I can span multiple columns. So I might have last name, first name, album. You know, maybe that combination will be uh, something like a primary key. And the thing that gives me the benefit of a primary key is that it allows me to search my database really quickly. If I have a table that's got millions and millions of rows, if I don't have a primary key to find, every time I look up information inside that table, it's going to take a long time. We're going to see there's ways of making access a lot more efficient, like indexes and partitioning. But for now, we want to look at the design in our particular table and say, is there any way to uniquely identify all of these pieces. So I could say something like a combination of last name, first name, and album. I should never have a duplicate of those three columns combined. Although if you're familiar with rock and roll, there are some artists who have put out multiple albums with the exact same name. Uh, somebody that I'm thinking of is uh, a, a British artist named Peter Gabriel. Uh, his first three solo albums didn't have a name to them. He just called them Peter Gabriel. So there's three albums, three completely separate solo albums called Peter Gabriel. Um, there's a, you know, you'd have to put in, you know, like one, two, or three as the album, but for a, a primary key on this particular table, there's not a great uh, selection out there, but I'm going to do a combination of last name, first name, and album as my primary key. So let's go through, and let's define what our primary key is like. So here you can see when, as I define a primary key, I can select the columns that I want and have them in order. So I want to have last name, first name, and album. That's going to be my primary key, and again, Oracle has generated this primary key for me automatically. So I click on OK. Oracle goes out there and creates a primary key. Again, if I refresh, I see there's my primary key. Uh, I don't have a search condition associated with it, but the primary key is made up of those three columns. So when it comes time for me to actually search information inside the database, uh, it can do it a lot more efficiently with a primary key. I only have three rows in there, so it doesn't really matter. Primary keys really help when you have tens of thousands and millions of rows inside a table and you have to find information quickly. So a primary key is used to uniquely identify a row inside my database. Now if I try to add a row with Radiohead blank and Oking computer a second time, it's not going to let me do it because I already created a primary key and said, hey, it's got to be unique. You're trying to insert a row that's not unique. So I better hope that I don't have a combination, last name, first name, and album uh, save that I try to insert a second time. A foreign key, I'm not going to talk about too much right now. I'm going to talk about that when I talk about table joins. But a foreign key is a way of going out to some other table and saying, hey, does this value exist? So let's take a look at an example where I might have a foreign key. If I hop back into my table here now and I say new, I might have, let's say, a table that has a whole bunch of locations. So again, I'm not very good with this pen yet. So I might have all these different locations that are out there. So I might have location ID and the actual location itself. So I might have 10 is Denver, 20 is Phoenix, and 30 is New York. I might have another table where I'm storing employee information. And as part of that employee information, I'll have last name and first name and all that other stuff, all those other columns that I would have in there. But I might have something called location ID. I don't want somebody to enter employee information for a location that I don't have defined. I don't want somebody putting in a 40 for Smith. 
because location 40 doesn't exist. So what I can do is I can set up a foreign key inside my database that says, you know what, look at the value in some other table. I want to look at the value in that table and make sure that that value exists. So if I try to put in a 40, it'll automatically look at this other table and say, hey, there is no 40. That's not, an, uh, that's not a good value. If I try to put in a 30, okay, 30's there for New York, no problem. But I want to set up a foreign key to this other table and say, hey, does this guy exist? Right now, we haven't really done that inside our database yet, so I'm not going to walk through that. But when I start looking at more complex joins, I'm going to do that. So this video really shows you the different types of constraints that are out there and how that can limit the information that's going to go into your Oracle database automatically.